Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Jimmy. So, what's up, dude? What's up? What's up? Do you have like a pimple in your mouth? Yeah, I have a pimple in my right here. Right here? Yes. Does it hurt? Yeah, but I have some, you know, medicine to take care of that, so it's not that bad. I see. So, what were you doing? I am polishing my paper. Yes. <laughs> So if you guys have not checked the uh, latest video on um, a day in the life of a Michigan PhD, that video describes his life as a PhD before. Past that stage, go to a next day stage, uh, mm -hmm. PhD 2.0. Yeah, it's, it's upgraded version. Yeah, and then you are very busy. Yeah, sort of. Now, now I'm working from home, so it's okay. It's just... Uh, uh, it's hard to tell whether it's weekends or weekdays. It's pretty much working every day. Do you feel like you are working more time or? I think I will definitely work more times. More time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the funny thing over time, but in the meantime, you feel less tired because now you don't have to walk to work or spend more time in the like. And the thing that you know, doing time when I need to go to the go to the lab. Mm -hmm. I have to get up early, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, I already get up early, so I don't need to work that hard to in in the lab. So I just oh, playing really? around my phones, mm -hmm. walking around, and you know, I just say, okay, I already get up this early, so mm -hmm. when I'm home, I have no this kind of excuse. Hmm, interesting. For me, if I work in my office, then I have a fixed amount of time that I know I need to be in the office and I will devote 100% to the work and then after maybe 5 o'clock, I went back home, I do not touch anything at work anymore because I know that I've already worked enough of time. Now, if I'm working from home, then I also count the hours, uh, but I don't have like a fixed time anymore. So if I work fewer time during the afternoon, then I might work a little bit more during the evening. So for me, that didn't change a lot in terms of the duration of my actual working time. But I do feel that working from home is more flexible for me because now I can have more time to prepare for dinner at the right, right time. So overall, we're staying good and we're taking good care of ourselves. Guys, welcome back to today's video. I hope you guys are staying well during this time of period. We have been working from home for two weeks now and just to let you guys know that we are safe and sound and are taking good care of ourselves. So we see the death tolls and the number of infected people have been skyrocketing these days and very nervous about the situation out there and my parents have been super worried about the pandemic situation here it's the virus has been affecting us all to various extent and my heart goes to all especially to those who are directly involved in the virus from those infected to medical staff government leaders who have been working around the clock to ensure the safety. It's important to support those who are combating the virus in the front line um, and then also take good care of ourselves by safe and take precautionary measures. Wear masks, wear gloves when you go to grocery shopping and stay home as much as possible. I'd also take this time to take a step back for my busy daily life, focus more on my body, on my health, on my diet, and spend more time on things that I want to but didn't have enough time to do when I was working. So I developed some new hobbies such as baking. I've made chocolate chip cookies and some cornbreads last week so far and I'm planning to make some scones over the next two weeks um so we had the we had this potluck last year and one of my friends who brought her own like self-made scones to to the 
potluck and those were so yummy that and she I asked her for a recipe and she was so generous in sharing with me um, the those scones taste like a five-star hotel level so it's like yikes I wanted to make this my own um, I'm gonna link down below the recipe that my friend shared with me so that you get you guys can maybe take a look and start baking as well I was also able to read more books during this period and this brings to today's videos topic which is part two of the rich dad and poor dad series now before we go to the details grab a tea stay hydrated and sit back, lay back, and please accept my pouring of the knowledge to you guys. Oh, about this tea, uh, it's so good. So this tea bag I recently purchased from Amazon, and this is called the Titulia brand. So I initially have this from um, the dining hall, and then the tea bags were so fresh, and so it smells so good that I wanted I go ahead and purchase them myself uh, let me see if I have it so this is the one that I am having uh, it's called the Titulia organic teas the one the purple one is the jasmine green tea they also have different uh, ones such as the black tea and the earl grey tea and then also the pure green tea which I believe it's in green uh, package. The best thing about this is that they are all organic and they're individually packed. So it's like this. So it, when you purchase, it comes with a box and then in, it contains six cans of this and each can contains 30 tea bags which are individually wrapped and then inside it's something look like this. We started to work from home and I just realized it's so important to get a good drink, healthy drink, to help you go through all the work. Uh, especially if we're spending more time at home, I feel like we're, you know, drinking more, eating more at home, of course. And having a good tea will definitely benefit us a lot physically and mentally. So I'll, I'll also link down below the below the Amazon page to purchase this um purchase this tea if you want to enough about the chit chat we we're having which is was quite long um going back to today's video's contents so t this is the part two of the rich dad and poor dad following from the last video on what the t rich teaches their kids about the money that the poor and middle class do not book talks about four quadrants specified by four different type of people D, S, V, and I. So this is the book cover. So this is the quadrant. So on the left side, we have employer as E, and then S is self-employee, and then V as a business owner, and I as an investor. This book mainly first discusses about these uh, people in these four quadrants, like what are the differences between them, how are they different in managing their finance, and so and so on. So I'm gonna start with that. So the second book shares a lot of the common information and themes with the first book. I've talked quite a bit in details about the contents of the first book in my uh, previous video. So in today's talk, I want to focus more on the key takeaways that are mentioned heavily in the second book, but didn't get talked enough in the first one. There are four things that I want to talk about today. The first is about these four quadrants. And the second thing is about how to become the people on your right side of the quadrant. And the third thing is about the differences between a good debt versus a bad debt. And at the very end, I wanted to share with you guys the summary chart at the very end of the book, which is this. Um, the quick reference guide to wealth. So the E represents the employees who work at the company or maybe a doctor who works at a hospital. This type of workers are working to not make themselves rich but who are working to make their boss rich. 
Some people live page among those, some people live paycheck to paycheck, and this is exactly the problem we are facing today. So the Americans were unprepared for such an unexpected outbreak uh, event emergency because they're they, such an unexpected outbreak because they don't have emergency fund in their banking account and therefore they're dealing with a serious personal financial crisis at the right moment after they lost their job. As it represents a self-employed, um, people like lawyers or a writer or a freelance all fall into this category. Uh, these people exhibit do it myself type of characteristics. They are usually perfectionist, perfectionist who tends to prefer to accomplish things on their own. And B represents a business owner uh, who are usually founder of an organization or a company, or they can own a brand such as Jeffree Star, who owns Jeffree Star Cosmetics, if you are aware. Um, they usually have entrepreneurship and successful B type of people usually can turn their big ideas into a million billion dollar business and eventually achieve financial freedom. I represent the investors and these can range from small investors to big investors who specialize in certain areas such as uh, real estate or um, foreign currency traders. They invest in the B type of people. Um, B and I type of people live in a world that are not well known by the self-employed and employed people. They usually don't depend on monthly paychecks and they have a better management of their financial situation. Now, unlike employee and self-employee type of people who has to pay a big portion of their income to their government as a tax form before spending. B and I are leveraging on the corporate or other type of tax break laws so that they can spend or they can guarantee their amount of money first before paying taxes to the government. The author was trying to sell this idea that being in the right quadrant, which is B and I, will give you a better shot of attaining financial freedom. They have a very different perspectives on how they can manage the financial like workflow, money flow, to help them boost their assets column and then gaining a lot of the passive income from their assets. Now, a lot of people would argue that, well, these territories are especially risky and not safe. And it never is. The key point is not to avoid the risks, but how to manage the risks. So in conclusion, B and I people can achieve real financial freedom much easier than the left quadrant of the people, which is employee and self-employed people. And these four quadrants require very different skills. If you're doing well in one good quant one quadrant, doesn't necessarily imply that you will be doing sim good on the other quadrant. So um, school can better prepare you for uh, left side of the quadrant, which is the employee and self-employee types. But you need to educate yourself into being good at in the B and I type of people because school does not necessarily teach a lot about that. Now the next point that I want to talk about is the question of how. How can I make this transition from the left side of the quadrant to the right side of the quadrant? There are four main things. Uh, one is find a good mentor. I hope you guys have some sort of mentor in your life, at least had one so far. I'm fortunate enough to have a mentor in my in my family. Um, my mom was my mentor and my boyfriend was my mentor and then the friends around me, they all teach me so much that I consider them as a mentor, not necessarily that kind of professional mentor, but uh, as someone that I can always learn from. Um, I think not a lot of us can afford or have the 
chance to really find a, a professional lifetime mentor, um, I feel like that's fine. I can find things to learn from each individual person. And if I have the right mindset, I think that's already enough for me. Of course, in the future, if I have more access, then of course, I really want to have someone who are already very successful in certain fields that can teach me their how to navigate to the success and um, you don't need to constrain yourself to finding mentors within the people you already know you can also find mentors online for example i follow several youtubers they they're not necessarily mentors they're doing various kinds of things um, but I feel like watching them, following them can give myself an education about what types of people I want to become, uh, what types of things I want to do in my next 5 or to 10 years. Um, as long as they inspire me, I would regard them as my mentor, as my role model. And I feel there's already a lot of learning from that. And then the second one is develop your goals. So you can set your goals first, like where you want to be in the next five years, um, and then develop a solid plan and then have like, train your mind to have the mindset that you already accomplished that goal so that you can reinforce in your head that you're already on it, you have to be on it, you will be there soon. That kind of mindset will help you be persistent and um, not to give up even when you encounter many failures. And failures are inevitable. People learn the most from their mistakes, not from their success. No one can achieve anything, anything big in one shot. And it's not success, it's not like that. It usually takes you know, going back and forth and a lot of the roller coaster period and a lot of the uh, confusion and frustration. I get that because I've been through that a lot. Um, but I feel that at the very end of the day, when you finally achieve something, it's those little things, little setbacks that makes you learn the most. Um, and those are valuable experience you will feel appreciated for later in your life. And other than that, it's um, since we're not automatically taught about those uh, business you know and investor type of thing knowledge from school it's important to learn those on your own either taking the online classes read the investment financial books or all kinds of learning just from your mentors talking to other people sharing your success stories etc etc those like knowledge uh, will be very very helpful and last but all, just do it, uh, make it into action. Do not just sit back and, uh, you know, just think about it and never act upon it. I think the most important thing is to start today, start now. Whatever you are doing, whatever you're thinking, whatever your goal is, have a plan and start from now. Because uh, you feel like there is a million miles until you reach your goal. But taking that one small step each time you, you go move forward can really help you shorten the distance to your goal. And the closer you come to the goal, the more encouragement you feel. And that's how you get motivated to take another step forward. If you never stop, you will only stare at the X amount of miles to your goal and nothing is going to happen. You, you will not you can't wait for the magic to happen to transform you from where you are today to the person who already achieved that goal because that's not going to happen and let's not count on that. Okay, now the third point that I want to talk about is the difference between a good debt and bad debt. Um, told, the rich dad told him that borrowing money is okay. You just need to differentiate between what is a good debt and what is a bad debt. Uh, he defines a good debt to be any debt that um, somebody else pays for you. So for example, you bought a property uh, based on a mortgage loan. Now, if you are paying using your own sweat and using your own money, then this is considered as, as a bad debt. Now, if you uh, make this into a rental property and then have some tenants pay for your mortgage, 
and then you can make a little bit of a cash out of that, then this is considered to be a good debt. So he also mentions that uh, a lot of middle class think that like housing investment should be done when you buy a house and then wait and hold until the like the value goes up and then you sell it and he was he said this is not what the rich people are doing um he said you make money when you buy not when you sell uh so you try to go into looking around in the market and find a good deal um especially those who are undervalued and you buy that property so it's that it's that time when you make a good money not when you have to sit on it, wait for 10, 20 years in order to wait for the uh, property value to go up. All in all, in the third point, I think he wanted to stress the idea, you get a property that is undervalued at the current market price and you can borrow money from the bank, from the other brokers, and then you invest in property, but uh, make sure that you are making this a rental property and have other people who rent your apartment, your condo to pay the loan for you. Um, otherwise, you are kind of paying the rent, paying everything for the people, for the person who are lending you your property. Um, that's that. That's how they make money in the real estate investment. Okay, finally, the last point is the summary chart at the very end of the book. This chart summarizes the difference between the broke masses, the successful middle class investor, and the rich people. Um, each row is specified as an aspect. Uh, who the broke masses, who uh, most of them are, or like a majority of them are employees. And uh, for successful middle class investor, a majority of them are employees and self-employed. Notice that these are both of these are coming from the uh, left side of the quadrant, while the rich people almost certainly come from the right side of the quadrant. They are either business owners or pure investors. Now there are more rows that I will not go through one by one. You can uh, pause the video and take a look by yourself. I think the most important one that I want to point out is uh, the 20th one, which is the key indicators event. For broke masses, their key indicator event is savings account with $100 in it. And then the middle class is like maybe $1 million in net worth. This is kind of their milestone, like the big life, lifetime milestone. But for the rich people, their indicator event is how to have passive income exceed their expenses. Now, this point is talked heavily uh, in the first video and also in the cash flow game. So if you still don't understand what the passive income exchange expenses are, like what are those words mean, please check out my first video and also um, and also play the cash flow games because that one is so 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 educational and so 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 good uh, so 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 inspiring so for those of you who have not checked my first video the cash flow is a game that he designed to help people better understand the idea or the mindset of a rich people it's essentially a board game like a monopoly but uh, unlike monopoly you have more choices you will you will have to make more choices about uh, finance decisions. It has various components such as a stock, um, such as um, business partnerships, uh, or land owner, or um, real asset property exchange. So they have built in several elements regarding the business world. Through that game, you will uh, you will uh, you will try to accumulate your own wealth. And then the goal of the game is to teach you how you can build your asset column and reduce your liability column so that you can achieve financial freedom by achieving the key event indicator mentioned in this chart, which is to have your passive income exceeds your 
expenditure. The one I played is a free online version, which is called Cashflow One Hour Classic. I will link them below so that you guys can so that you guys can play. I, it took me around two hours to finish the whole thing. Um, and then you can play with multiple people, so it's a very, very, it's a very, very good game. I highly, highly, highly recommend. Please check that out. That finishes the content of today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope you guys find it uh, educational, fun, and uh, and have some takeaways from this book. Now, I said it. I mentioned in my first video that I'm going to. Uh, read the third one, which is the um, um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. The third one, which is called Rich Dad Poor Dad, uh, what the rich teaches about their kids about investment that the poor and middle class will not just realize that this was not actually a book. This is a, uh, I think it's a video. I think it's, is this a video or like a PDF that he sent to up to people. Um, so it's not actually a book and that's why I couldn't find it on uh, my library resources. So I think I'm going to end my video on Rich That Poor That series here, which is I have two parts. Um, I feel that uh, overall the book was easy to read, easy to understand, and if you do not have the time to read the books or you, you do not have the access to the physical copy of the book, uh, you can just read, you can just follow my videos on this for part one and part two uh, because I already give you guys a very detailed version of what's being talked about in the book. Uh, hopefully this can save you some bit of your time um, and help lastly please subscribe if you have not done yet uh, your subscription really matters a lot to us i hope you guys have a wonderful day uh, stay well stay healthy with your family take good care of yourself and make the best use of time for your life thank you for watching bye guys